A few years ago, I participated in a Citizens Police Academy here in Hudson, Wisconsin. Part of the optional experience was to be tasered for a very long five seconds. The disabling feature of the taser is the flow of electrons out of the body, triggering the muscles to violently contract as the piezoelectric energy of the muscle cell is drawn out. In other words, it drains you, quite literally, of electrons. This draining or extraction of electrons by the taser is how rivers were formed in the cataclysm through an electron extraction event. This is my cajon. It's a percussion instrument, the design of which came with my favorite Lichtenberg patterns across the surface. The pattern is created when two nails are pounded into the surface and water with either lime or baking soda is spread between the positive and the negative electrodes. What is happening here is not electricity being forced into the wood causing it to burn. The burning is a byproduct of the breaking of the bonds between the molecules of carbon making up the wood. By the extraction, not the addition, of electrons. Remember, we end up with less wood when we're done, not more. And in the same way, this effect leaves ashes from extracting electrons from the wood, the river forming discharges in the cataclysm extracted electrons from the limestone and left the formerly well striated limestone in a variety of states from undifferentiated limestone to sandstone to plain old sand. And in its wake, it also left amazing standing stones at sites like Devil's Lake, Wisconsin. Understanding the event becomes simpler if we take a moment to understand what atomic bonds are. So what does this have to do with atoms? Good question, transition clone. We saw in the video on temperature that chemical energy is just the potential energy between atoms and molecules. Just like the Earth and the Moon have gravitational potential energy, atoms, or more specifically their electrons, have electrical potential energy. But did you notice what I did there? I said the atoms or electrons have the energy, not the bonds. You're so used to seeing molecules like this with all these bars connecting the atoms. Yes, that's duct tape, it's cheap, okay? An atomic bond isn't any more tangible than the bond that holds you on the Earth, or the moon in orbit. I mean, it doesn't look like this or anything. So atomic bonds are a field, and something tells me that this field is fundamentally electromagnetic. It is important to understand that the forces of discharge were not on the DeLorean scale. But the largest, the These fundamental forces occurred at scales large enough they exposed the underlying fabric of electric reality. A bowl of lightning is a current aligned field. One side is drawing current, the other side is drawn to the current. The essential function is the search for electrons. The magnetic field resides at a 90 degree angle to the electric current. As the field reaches out for equalization, and this reaching out is a key concept, what it seeks is the next weakest pair of bonds at an atomic level. The magnetic field simply cancels the atomic bond and the electron was simply drawn up the path of the current. Let's look at the epicenter of the Western Wisconsin extraction event, Devil's Lake, found in the Wisconsin Dells. This was ground zero in the electron extraction event, which first created the Wisconsin River, a portion of the Upper Mississippi River, and the St. Croix River. Devil's Lake is what is known as an endoric lake, which means that it does not drain. This means it is not a product of erosion. Now one may think that this is a minor odd feature, but let's take a moment to look at just how odd this lake is itself. A 1917 article in the Journal of Geology first noted the curious characteristics of this lake. The research notes that Devil's Lake rests at an elevation of 960 feet above sea level. The surrounding broader area, called the Central Mississippian Basin which surrounds western Wisconsin, rests at an elevation of 800 feet. So this is a lake on a hill 
and while the surface of Devil's Lake rests at 960 feet, the rock plateau formations around the lake rise another 500 feet in near 90 degree cliffs to an incredible 1,480 feet above sea level. As for the depth of the lake, researchers noted that a 1914 well for the new park dug at the site just feet from the lake drilled down nearly 300 feet without hitting bedrock. Instead, it went through sedimentary deposits. The 1990 estimate, and it is only an estimate because they still haven't found the bottom, thought the bottom rest around 600 feet above sea level, or 200 feet below the surrounding Mississippian Basin. In short, geologists have no concrete explanation for the lake and theories require hundreds of millions, if not a nice round 1.6 billion years of geological action to account for the data. Devil's Lake was the anode epicenter of the discharge, one which cored a hole in the earth of a yet undetermined depth. Having established our epicenter, let's move outward. Since the discovery of Devil's Lake, geologists have been baffled by the 90 degree turn of the lake as water doesn't erode at right angles, much less on lakes that don't experience erosional drainage. And glaciers, which were also suggested, don't make right turns. What this feature indicates is the direction of discharge. And in the case of Devil's Lake, it discharged in two directions. First to the east, as we find it directly aligned with the epicenter of the larger Great Lakes formation discharge and then it changed and the primary discharge turned in a direct northern orientation with the northern eye of the Taurus found at Isle Royale in Lake Superior. We can also see this progression as the initial Lichtenberg figures stretch west and then turn abruptly north heading to equalize the Lake Superior escarpment. Let's move further outward on the lake. Finally, there are two earthen dams at each end of the lake. Geologists theorize that these were pushed into place by glaciers, but they are actually the discharge material from the crater of the lake. Let's move out to the Wisconsin River itself. In 2018, a team of geologists proved by measuring the bedrock elevation of the southern portion of the Wisconsin River that its bedrock slopes west to east, while today the Wisconsin River instead flows east to west into the Mississippi. The deepest channeling will always occur in the area of the discharge, explaining why Lake Wisconsin is 60 feet deep while the river's depth is at maximum 28 feet. The Wisconsin Riverbed properly flows north to south and the southern bedrock tilts west back towards the east or the epicenter. All arrows point here. The researchers also note four additional important data points. First, the author notes, quote, many of the tributaries of the lower Wisconsin River angle to the east where they join this westward flowing river. These tributaries are simply the arms of the electrically formed Lichtenberg figure, which will ever and always have an angular alignment to the current source. Second, the author notes, quote, the valley of the lower Wisconsin River narrows as you follow it downstream. This too is a feature of the Lichtenberg figure, where the greatest extraction of electrons will occur not just at but around the anode, and the width of the current will reduce as it gets further from the source. The third note is perhaps the most telling evidence for a cataclysmic formation, quote, where it joins the Mississippi River at Prairie du Chien, the Wisconsin River curves to the north to join the south-flowing Mississippi. This is because the Mississippi River was formed by a discharge which occurred after the Wisconsin River discharge event. The initial Wisconsin River discharged, turning the corner of Prairie du Chien and cutting the upper Mississippi and St. Croix rivers. At a later point during the same cataclysmic event, the Mississippi and its tributaries south of Wisconsin were formed in another discharge, likely during the West Coast events covered in previous videos. Finally, 
The researchers note, quote, South of the confluence of the two rivers, the valley of the Mississippi River also narrows. Indeed, this confirms the two discharge hypothesis. The discharge potential from the Gulf was not as great when it reached the Ion Trail of the Wisconsin River discharge, and so did not create a channel of the same or greater width as the local Wisconsin discharge. As with my Cajon, Lichtenberg patterns are drawn to meet in the middle. The southwest end of Lake Superior shows clear discharge patterns with Manitoui Falls, Wisconsin's highest falls, being a remnant of the northern end of the event. The rivers of northern Wisconsin flow north, while the rest of the rivers of the Midwest flow south to the Mississippi. The miracle to observe here is that the event was both cataclysmic and yet delicate, leaving the most amazing standing stones. And no, that is not an accidental reference. Standing stones were as striking to survivors around the globe as they are to us today. They mark an event worth remembering. Their symbolism became a new tool in marking events of significance to generations many ages later who lost the original reference but maintained the context. Rivers tell us much about how the cataclysm progressed. Please like, share, subscribe, leave me your thoughts down below in the comments. Peace.